Before we get started, I wanted to tell you about a project I did earlier this year with the folks at Woodsmith Magazine. It's an online course that's called Table Saw Basics, but it covers way more than that title suggests. You're going to learn everything from table saw safety and accessories to full-on joinery and loads of tips and tricks. Pretty much everything you need to know about a table saw. It's divided into six 20-minute episodes that we filmed on the iconic set of the Woodsmith Shop PBS show. I wrote it, they filmed and produced it, and the result is just amazing. There is a charge for it, but I really think it's worth the price. I'll put a link to it in the notes below this video. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube and check that out. You're going to enjoy it and I would really appreciate it too. Now back to the workshop. When we left off, I was boxing some stuff up and moving things around for the first of a couple of big shop projects. This one is a miter saw workstation, and I've already manhandled a pair of cabinets into position for the base, got them all level and secure, and now it's time to start cutting the plywood. I usually try to buy the better quality birch veneered plywood, even for shop projects, but between this project and the next one that we're going to do after it, I'm going to need like nine sheets. I'm no cheapskate, I just don't like spending money. And the regular sanded plywood that I've always called junk suddenly looked pretty darn good once I saw the price difference. I'm no math whiz, but I should be able to save like 150 bucks if I go with the pine stuff. I'd buy a lot of cold ones for me and this dude I suckered into making a bunch of extra cuts at the panel saw. I always wait until they're done and they got the pieces neatly stacked on the cart. And then I say, ah, I changed my mind, I tend to walk away. <laughs> Gets a laugh like 5% of the time. I don't get my panels cut exactly in half. I plan ahead so that the pieces I end up with still make the best use of the full sheet when I break it down further on my own saw. Unfortunately, there's no piece of plywood long enough to span both cabinets that make up the workstation's base. So I'll have to have a seam in the middle. When I originally designed this, the seam was right on the edge of the right cabinet. But then I realized how stupid that was when I can just shift the plywood over and support the seam on top of the cabinet. I also decided to strengthen the seam with some loose tenons. Now I don't have a fancy billion dollar domino machine, but I do have a beadlock jig, which is way less expensive and does essentially the same thing, just takes a little bit longer. It clamps on the edge of your workpiece and you use a drill bit to bore a set of holes that all line up. Then you shift the guide over just a teeny bit and then you bore another set of holes which partially overlap the first set of holes. This creates what is kind of like a ribbed interior on the mortise. And you can use specially shaped loose tenon stock, which you can buy or make yourself with a rotor bit. Or you can take a chisel and just pair out those ribs. They include a guide to make that easy. And then you can use rectangular, regular tenon stock. I was pretty impressed that I got everything to line up nearly perfectly on my first try. Then Mustache Mike pointed out that since we're screwing the panel down, there really wasn't a need for tenons to strengthen the seam. While he was putting some ice on his lip, I cut some more parts on the table saw. These will support the main platform on the workstation, and I want them all to be even. So instead of using the bandsaw to cut the rectangular cutouts like I normally would, I used the table saw itself because the fence would ensure that each cut was perfectly straight and smooth and identical from piece to piece. I also used a wood clamp on my miter fence to finish each cut. And before someone complains that I have my table saw blade raised way up and that doesn't look safe, I did that on purpose to reduce the size of the overcut on the back side of each piece. Just be careful you don't lean your forehead too close to the top of your saw or you're going to ruin your bangs. What do these supports support, you ask? This thing. It has to be fastened to the top of my cabinets. I used a mini pocket hole jig for the job. I have a big Craig jig, I even got one of those big foreman machines, but I still love this little thing. It gets me out of all sorts of jams in little projects like this, like building a section of a workstation without considering how I was going to fasten it down. Even if you've got a regular Craig jig, if you don't have one of these mini things, you should get one. I'll put a link to it in the notes below this video. There are two of these platforms on this workstation, and each has a fence on the front. Between them sets the miter saw. So have you figured out what our top secret project is yet? Let's review the clues. It's long, there's a miter saw on top, I keep calling it a workstation, and at the beginning of this video I said it's a miter saw workstation. 
So if you haven't figured it out yet, I can't help you. I don't have a straight edge long enough to span the entire thing, but I do have a circular saw edge guide with an extension on it, so that's over eight foot. This gave me a rough idea on where the shims had to go, especially on the end of the fence furthest from the saw. If it's straight enough for the edge guide, it's as straight as any board's going to be. Really, the critical part is right where the wooden fences meet the saw's fence, as well as where the wooden tables meets the saw's table. I took some extra time and a more precise straight edge to be sure it was even there. I did need a few washers on the lower table to bring everything up to the same plane, and a couple of shims on the end of the fence panel, but I was pretty impressed at how easily I got it all aligned. No thanks to Mustache Mike, who is no help with alignment chores since he lost the insole of his right shoe. That completes the base of my miter saw workstation, but it's far from finished. There's a top section that still has to be built. We'll get to that and some more cool additions to the workshop in the next vlog. This video was sponsored by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Rockler and I have been partners for years. They took a chance on me when I was just getting started because they knew how important the online woodworking community is to keeping this craft alive for future generations. So please, thank them by visiting their website. And don't just type in rockler.com. Use the link that I'm putting in the notes below this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, just click show more. If you use that link to go there, they'll know that you're supporting us and I would greatly appreciate that. Well, that's enough work for today. Time to sit back and have a cold one. Cause you've earned it, my friend. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com.